Do you have most of your solutions built up into a product like Azure? But you also saw that we have a new product called Fabric that you would like to check out. Well, specifically, if you have a lot of solutions built inside of Azure Data Factory, just because there is not a single button that you can click to migrate everything that you have there into Fabric, does not mean that you should have a barrier of entry to start checking out and using not only all of the solutions you've already built inside of Azure Data Factory, but also using many of the new features inside of Fabric. And so today, we are going to be talking about a new preview feature called Azure Data Factory in Fabric. Let's check it out. All right, welcome everybody. My name is Zane Goodman with Pragmatic Works, and I'm excited to be with you today because we have a very interesting topic to discuss. You know, many of us have a lot of solutions, whether that be pipelines or data flows that are built inside of Azure Data Factory, right? And these are very important workflows that we've built. But then we look over to the left and we see that there's this new product called Fabric and it has its own data factory and it has new and improved capabilities that we don't have inside of Azure Data Factory. So you might think to yourself, you know, I really would like to dive into Fabric and see what I can do. But the only problem that you might face is the fact that you still need to make sure as you check out Fabric that you are able to continue to manage and still create different items and solutions inside of Azure Data Factory. There's not exactly one method that we can use to migrate everything from Azure as a whole and specifically Azure Data Factory over into Fabric. Just because that's the case, we still want to make sure as we check out this new product, we're able to manage what we already have built. That way, as we do manage what we built in ADF, we can slowly, number one, learn more about Fabric, and number two, start to actually rebuild what we've made in Azure Data Factory inside of Fabric. But the key aspect of that, something that is going to make or break that possibility, is making sure that we are still able to handle everything in the solution that we've already built, which in this case would be Azure Data Factory. With that in mind, we are going to go to app.powerbi.com, which is going to bring us into the Fabric home page. As you can see right here, I am inside of Fabric, or technically Power BI. They work together at this point in the same cloud service. But here I am, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a workspace that I've already created. And that workspace is going to be my ADF in Fabric YouTube demo workspace. Now, you're welcome to follow along with me here. You do need to make sure that you have an ADF instance that you have created in order to actually connect with this preview feature. But here I have a workspace that has a fabric capacity enabled on it. Step two is actually connecting to an Azure Data Factory. And we can do that very easily. As you can see, I already have one connected here. This is the one that we'll be going through. Now, if you want to make this new preview feature available inside of your workspace, I'm going to select new item. And I'm just going to use the search bar because I know what I'm looking for here. I'm going to say Azure Data Factory. Keep in mind, this is in preview mode, so things will change over time with this item inside of Fabric continue to refer back to the Microsoft documentation as they update the articles that pertain to Azure Data Factory inside of Fabric. I'm going to select this, and what it's going to ask me for is a particular ADF instance that I have over inside of the Azure space. Now, I'm going to keep the Azure Data Factory instance I already have connected here inside of my workspace, but I wanted to show you something very important, which is oftentimes, Whenever you are working inside of Azure Data Factory, especially if that is something you're using all the time, creating these pipelines, this is something that's been built up as a piece of infrastructure in your organization, then you might be using DevOps. 
So you might have Git integration or DevOps enabled inside of your Azure Data Factory. This is going to be very common for those that have Data Factory in Azure set up as almost a piece of infrastructure in their organization. You're going to want to more than likely move what you're creating from a worker branch to a main branch or however it is that you like to set that up. The unfortunate news here is that if you do have your Azure Data Factory set up that way, enabled with DevOps, this is not going to be supported for you. So when I go over and I hove over one of the Azure Data Factory instances that I know has DevOps enabled, it's going to let me know that as of right now, it is not supported yet. But keep in mind, this is a preview feature and we have DevOps for Fabric and we also have it for Azure Data Factory. So I imagine somewhere down the line, this is going to change. Hopefully, that way we are able to bring in and connect to ADF instances that have DevOps enabled. For now, I'm going to select cancel. So here we are inside of the ADF instance that we have connected to. And it's kind of combined the UI that we're used to in Azure Data Factory with the UI that we're used to if we work inside of Fabric. And this is really great because it answers the question that I get all the time in the Fabric Bootcamp that I teach, which is, Zane, I have a bunch of pipelines in Azure Data Factory. I want to use Fabric, but I don't know how to make the connection between Azure Data Factory to Fabric. And now, even though this isn't migrating everything over, we still would need to rebuild our pipelines inside of Fabric to replicate what we've done in ADF. We now have inside of Fabric the ability to see, connect to, and create and edit the pipelines and other items we've created inside of Azure Data Factory, while of course staying inside of Fabric. Now let's kind of explore what we have here inside of this new preview feature. The first thing that I'll mention is up at the top. We have what we're used to in ADF, the ability to validate the work that we've done. We have the ability to publish all whenever we've made changes. We can unmount this ADF instance from Fabric if that's something that we need to do. Then we can select this button to monitor in Azure Data Factory, which is really great because there might be something that you have to do inside of the Azure portal itself. Quickly jump over into your Data Factory by selecting a button from here in Fabric. If I select settings, there's not a whole lot of settings for us to walk through. There's, of course, what this particular data factory instance is about. I have a little description here. There's a sensitivity level that label that we have for many other items in Fabric and then endorse endorsement as well, which is a great feature when it comes to the Fabric One Lake. If we go over to the left under my author hub, I have my pipelines, right? I've got a bunch of different pipelines here. And with each pipeline, I am able to add activities. Keep in mind, I'm here inside of Fabric right now. I'm not in the Azure portal. So I can come through. I can start to add in more activities. I can start to build pipelines as well by selecting the ellipsis next to pipelines, hitting that new pipeline button, or looking at some templates, or creating a new folder the same items that we would be doing inside of ADF. I can also debug, I can add a trigger, and I can view run history here as well. Now, I will say one of the things that I've noticed as I've tested out this preview feature is that the run history seems to be a little bit odd. It has not shown some of the run history that I have set up for today's YouTube video. So keep that in mind. I imagine it's just a bit of a bug, but that is why you have your button up here to monitor in Azure Data Factory. So if anything like that happens, you can continue to work inside of Fabric. But if you need to check the monitoring hub and something's not coming up that you know should be coming up, you can click that button, head right over to the Azure portal and see if something's going on there. Then if I continue down, I still have my data sets. I can create a new data set here. I'm not going to go through the whole process of creating a data set, but as you can see, this UI, very familiar to someone working with ADF. So if I wanted to create a new data set connecting to an ADLS Gen 2 account, I can do that right here. And I can go through the process of making this new data set. The same goes, let me collapse a few of these items here. The same goes with my data flows, right? Now, one of the really great new features inside of Fabric, and maybe one of the 
big reasons why you might even want to start using Fabric is Dataflow Gen 2, where in Fabric's Dataflow Gen 2, it's actually based on Power Query, which is definitely going to be very popular because it makes transforming your data a breeze. That all being the case, right? We can create pipelines, we can create data sets, we can create data flows. But when I was first walking through this new preview feature, not only did I ask, okay, well, is it just for monitoring or can I create and edit items? Well, now that we know we can create and edit items, the other big portion that I wanted to check out is integration runtime. So if I go over to my manage hub, not only can I create new link services, which is a very important part of ADF, just like everything else we've covered so far, but we also have integration runtimes. This integration runtime is still going to be what is used to run these pipelines. You might be wondering what kind of capacity is used here. We're using fabric capacity for the workspace, but we're connecting to the ADF instance in the Azure portal. So what is being used here to run all of this? Well, it is going to be your integration runtime. We are still leveraging the integration runtime that is coming from the Azure portal or ADF in the Azure portal. Very important aspect to keep in mind. We, as we use this preview feature, connecting to ADF and Fabric are not exclusively using the Microsoft Fabric capacity when we run these pipelines and data flows. It's going to be that integration runtime. But understanding that, I had another question, which was, what about a self-hosted integration runtime? What if I want to connect to some on-prem data? That is very important, of course. Well, you can do that. To prove this, I have removed the integration runtime service from my computer here. So it's going to show unavailable. But I created this new particular self-hosted integration runtime just to test this. I created this inside of Fabric. I connected to data and everything was good to go. And this is good news because this means that whenever we want to create these items, right, we don't have a fragmented solution in this instance. We are able to connect to ADF in Fabric create pipelines and data flows, and create new link services and integration runtime, whether that be a normal integration runtime or whether that be a self-hosted integration runtime to connect to on-prem data. If I selected to go monitor in Azure Data Factory, you can see this is going to open up Data Factory here for me. And once it does, if I go to my integration runtimes, the integration runtime that I created inside of Fabric has shown up right here. Very good news for us. And with that all being the case, that right there is Azure Data Factory inside of Fabric. The features that we have here inside of Fabric, now that we're able to connect to ADF, allow us and enable us to continue to use and run the solutions that we've created in Azure, while also using and learning about this new tool called Fabric, which is very important for us to start the process of actually moving over to a new tool. This feature right here removes the barrier of entry for a person wanting to learn and use Fabric, but already building their solutions inside of ADF. I'm really curious. Please let me know down in the comments as you have moved over to Fabric, whether it be from Azure, another piece of Azure, or maybe just Azure Data Factory or some other tool, let me know down in the comments what method you have used to start migrating your solutions to Fabric. I would love to know, is it more of a code based? Are you using uh, notebooks to move everything over? Maybe JSON to move everything over? What is the solutions that you have come up with? I would love to know. With that all being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video talking about Azure Data Factory inside of Fabric. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.